Hello, I'm Yana and today I wanted to share a bunch of things that I've learned about curiosity after studying it for a whole year. And boy, I did. Did I learn a lot and also realised that there's still a lot we don't know about it. So I've just finished honours and a big chunk of this year involved doing a research project and writing a mini thesis of 9,000 words. And my thesis topic was on curiosity. Uh, or more specifically looking at uh, different dimensions of trait curiosity and how they relate to different emotions people feel uh, when they're curious and looking for information. So I guess how curiosity can be a different experience depending on your personality. So this video will be a bit less focused on the specifics of my project and on us as a whole but rather more on the biggest takeaways and surprising things that I've learned. Uh, whilst reading about curiosity and doing um, a study on it. I'm planning to make videos on more honours related stuff and perhaps maybe a video on the project. So comment down below if you have any questions or you, you want something covered in particular. So right now just get comfortable, grab a drink and prepare yourself for the onslaught of information that I'm about to give you because I've learnt it and I desperately want to share it. <laughs> so number one, there's many different types of curiosity. So when we talk about curiosity, we usually generally mean uh, that it's a feeling of wanting to find something out. Or if someone's curious, then that means that they like learning things or trying, yeah, well, essentially to find things out. So it's pretty easy to see that curiosity is just kind of that one thing, that one feeling, or that kind of disposition. But when you start thinking about it a bit more deeply, that's when you start to realise that there's multiple things that encompass the idea of curiosity. So that's why psychologists have tried to create uh, theories and define different types of curiosity and study differences between them. So first you can divide curiosity into traits and states. A trait curiosity is part of one's general disposition or personality, like it's a personality trait. And state curiosity is a feeling that you get when you want to know something. Like if you heard someone mention something about a topic and you want to know more about it, so it's like a more of a momentary feeling, I guess. But whereas someone who's high on trait curiosity, they're generally curious in their day-to-day -day life and they usually like to find out about a lot of things. Um, they might like learning new things, uh, reading, watching documentaries and so on. And so people high on trait curiosity, they experience their curiosity uh, much more than regular person. Now of course people can still feel state curiosity even if they're not curious people, though they might feel curious uh, a bit less often and to a lesser degree. And then there's a difference between something called perceptual curiosity and epistemic curiosity. So perceptual curiosity is something that uh, we actually share with animals. So if we hear like a noise or we'll see something in the corner of our eyes, we usually turn to look and see if you have a pet and you make some noise or you show them some toy or new food. They usually try to investigate what it is, especially it's, if it's something that they haven't seen before. And epistemic curiosity is more, well, it's all about uh, wanting to learn information, uh, like new information, to gain knowledge. And this could be something from seeing a new word, uh, so you google it, um, seeing an actor in a movie and being interested in knowing their name. Uh, just wanting to keep reading a book late into the night. So epistemic curiosity is much more broad, I think, and researchers have tried to, uh, to break it down even further into different like, domains. For example, some argue that social curiosity is about uh, wanting to find out details of other people, and, like uh, usually insights gossip. Sensation or thrill seeking is about wanting to try things like bungee jumping and skiing. There's also morbid curiosity, it's about you know, all disgusting things. <laughs> and a bit more related to my thesis, uh, trait curiosity has been divided into different dimensions or facets. So I've looked at the difference between curiosity as a feeling of deprivation and curiosity as a feeling of interest. Curiosity as deprivation is about wanting to know information because you're so interested in it that it's almost frustrating to not know the answer and it's almost like a negative feeling that you don't because you don't have this piece of information. So like if someone asks you a question and it may ring a bell but you don't really know and you have a really strong urge to find out and if 
you can't find out for whatever reason, then it feels kind of annoying that you don't know and you feel a bit bothered, you know? Well, another example is if a season of your favourite show ended on a cliffhanger and it seems like the wait is impossible and if they cancel the show, well, it's a very frustrating feeling. And on the other hand, curiosity as interest is more positive. You want to know because it's fun, basically. Like, it's fun to learn, you like learning new things, and you like the new information. And something like that could easily lead you down a Wikipedia rabbit hole. This kind of curiosity is supposed to bring you more happy feelings compared to the other one that I talked about. Even if you don't know the information, it's still enjoyable to just find out. So in theory, people have a mix of both of these facets or dimensions of curiosity, but one may be a bit more dominant than the other. So that's why people may experience curiosity differently. Finally, there's a more technical difference. So curiosity re refers to more to one's kind of feelings and thoughts, and behavior is not really strictly included in the definition. So if you want to know something and you feel interested in knowing about something, or you're frustrated that you don't know it, or maybe it's a mix of both, uh, that is curiosity. And then when you go to Google it and find out the information, and you keep reading to learn more, that's information seeking the behavior of curiosity. And for well, and same with perceptual curiosity, if you see something and you approach it and turn um, your head, that's the behavior of curiosity. And next, I've learned that curiosity is a very diverse experience. And it ranges from very minor things to very big and abstract things. And I guess this sums up my last point, as curiosity has been thought about in different ways, especially with curiosity as interest and curiosity as deprivation. Curiosity can be different for everyone. Some may be only interested in certain things, others may be interested in lots of things, different things. Some people might like to solve riddles and puzzles because they're fun. Others might enjoy reading about something because they're doing it to learn more. And others just might enjoy watching reality TV because they're curious about what goes on in other people's lives. And the subject of curiosity can range from simple objects in your environment, like a strange sound or just a sign uh, somewhere in the street, to a fact, such as who will win the next election, or a topic or interest like uh, chess or string theory or even curiosity itself. And basically anything could be an object of curiosity. A piece of information in any whatever modality, if one feels curious to know about it or to investigate it closer, then it's an object worthy of curiosity. So thirdly, uh, we're willing to actually pay for information. So researchers, they study curiosity uh, using many different ways. Very creative uh, experiments have been done. And questions are usually used to measure different types of uh, trait curiosity and experiments are used to try and uh, induce uh, state curiosity to study behavior. And there's been a few experiments that found that people were willing to pay for information. Usually, and usually when this information is not very useful and like it won't help them win the game of the experiment. To give a more concrete example, uh, one study found that participants who were more curious were more willing to wait some time or give up a limited number of tokens to see the trivia answer. And so because we're willing to pay, especially if we're more curious and like exert effort for information, by some definition this makes information rewarding. So in fact some studies did show that uh, the reward areas of the brain uh, were more activated for people who were more curious about that piece of information, which uh, <laughs> makes information technically rewarding. And finally, curiosity improves learning. Some studies asked uh, trivia questions and asked participants to rate their curiosity and then they showed them the answers and later they tested them on the same trivia questions. And they found that people tended to remember things better if they were more curious about that information. And much of the brain regions that produce do dopamine and are involved with the reward uh, system are also involved in learning and, and to some extent they were lit, lit up as well. And so who knew that learning could be so rewarding? And I think this has major implications for studying. I think like instead of rote learning the information and just forcing it down your throat, 
you might remember it better if you become a bit more interested in what you're studying. And I think being interested in what you're learning makes it easier to study as well because you just inherently enjoy the process a bit more. <laughs> and so that was a ton of information. Thank you very much for coming to my TED talk. And I wish I could have broken it down into a more coherent and simpler uh, story. But <laughs> oh well, if you made this this far, thank you very much for watching. I hope I didn't bore you. Although that would be very ironic. I would love to hear your thoughts about this video and if you want me to cover some potentially honors related stuff or maybe go through some psychology topics that I found really interesting. I'd love to make videos like that as well. Thank you.